Hi, everyone, and welcome to this week's Moms Matter Google Hangout. I'm Lindsay Ferrier, and today we're talking about a YouTube video that has really taken the Internet by storm this week. It's about a young girl who has started her period, and she's actually celebrating it. She's not embarrassed. She uh, has become the most popular girl at summer camp because she was the first to get her period. She becomes this big expert at camp handing out tampons, giving advice, telling everyone what to do. Uh, the video is actually an ad, but it's being called revolutionary by a lot of people because it actually doesn't make periods seem embarrassing or unmentionable, and I guess we're all used to seeing that now in television ads. So joining me to talk about this are several writers from the start, Adriana Velez. Hi. And Jean Sager. Hello. And Sasha brown Worsham. Hi. And it looks like we have Catherine Donaldson Evans there too. Can you hear us okay, Catherine? Yes. Hi. Hi. Thanks for joining us. All right. So, first of all, let's just start with your reaction to this ad. What did you think when you saw it? It totally changed the conversation about periods. Um, it, um, all of the, all of the commercials we've ever seen before have been about, have been loaded with euphemism, and we all just kind of pretend it's not about. Uh, coming from the bear, it's blue liquids and women running through meadows with white pants and things like that. Um, but but even beyond that, um, it, it was just crazy to see your period cast as like something empowering and something that um, is makes you cool. <laughs> and um, especially for for a teenage girl, it's not something she's hiding. Or that she um, feels embarrassed about. It's this. It's her claim to fame, and um, um, it was just not like that. Was the exact opposite of what your period represented when I was a kid. What about the rest of you? Did you have a similar reaction to the video, or did you have different thoughts on it? Oh. I loved it. Um, I thought it was really cute, and actually, it's funny. My my little sister started her period while she was at camp, and uh, my parents were in Africa, so I am the one who got her her care package all together and sent it. And I like I turned it into this big celebration. I like made her a sad mixtape and stuff. So I shared it with her because she, I was like, oh, I think you'll be able to relate to this. And you know, but I don't remember my period being a humiliating thing at all. Like when I started, I was. Thrilled! I was so happy, and I was also because I was really late. I think I was like 14, and all my friends had already had theirs. And I mean, I'd been waiting and waiting and waiting. So for me, it was a huge celebration. And like, my mom took me out to dinner, and we had like this whole special girls' night. And I don't remember my mom. I, my mom actually treated it that way, like it was special and stuff. And so I always felt like it was. So this to me wasn't that revolutionary. I don't know. I didn't find it that shocking. It just sort of reiterated what I already thought and probably the way that I'll act with my daughter too. My daughter is seven and a half too. <laughs> I was kind of torn on it. I thought it was adorable but at the same point I almost thought that it was a fake sense of what it actually will be like. I mean you know when my daughter gets her period I really don't expect that she's going to want to go to school and tell every girl in the class about it. I mean I did have more of that humiliating feeling when I got it I was excited in the sense that, okay, everybody else in my class got it. When am I going to get it? When am I going to get it? Because I was younger than everyone in my class. But at the same point, you're bleeding. It's not comfortable. It's really not something joyful. I mean, I, I, I don't want to lie to my daughter. I don't want to freak her out. But at the same point, I don't want to make her think, yeah, you got your period. It sucks. You still there, I Jane? Yes. Okay. I didn't think it was that here. different. Um, I didn't think it was that different either. I'm kind of with Sasha. I didn't think it was. It was cute and funny and everything, but it kind of reminded me of, you know, are you there, God? It's me, Margaret. And you know, when everybody wanted to get their period because everybody else was, and it was a rite of passage and everything. I just saw this as sort of an updated or more modern version of that um, because. Uh, I don't know. It wasn't a humiliating thing. I mean, it could be if you weren't prepared or once you got it, everybody had those accidents in school and stuff like that. But in terms of the, the general gist of it being, you know, not humiliating and empowering, I thought that that's um, been done before just in different ways. Yeah, I thought it was really interesting when I watched it. It, you know, it's pretty graphic, and I think that's a good thing that she's using anatomically correct terms and things like that. 
the times I felt a little uncomfortable watching it, I realized later when I thought about it, it was because this, this ad was clearly written by adults and this girl was clearly saying things that adults had told her to say and it had a specific adult message. I think I would have liked to hear it a little more in that voice, you know, in her voice, preteen voice and less, you know, carefully scripted words written by adults. Did you guys kind of get a sense of that? It seemed like it was a little bit over the heads of actual preteens because it was trying to appeal to people like us. I agree with that. She was kind of overly confident more than, you know, a normal 12, 13 year old girl and the way she was talking about like her vag and stuff, you know, I was like, oh, come on. Like, I don't, you know, <laughs> I don't know 30 year old women that talk like that necessarily. <laughs> I mean, I wasn't offended by it, but I just thought no 13, 14 year old girl is going to say something like that. So I definitely got that sense too. It, was, it, it just felt very scripted. That's yeah, where was I was little, torn it on was it. A little uncomfortable. Yeah. So for those of you with daughters, how are you planning to tell your daughters about this? Have you done it already? If you haven't, do you have a plan? My daughter has known from the get-go that, you know, the period exists. I mean, not to be too gross, but, you know, she is in the bathroom, I guess you could say. And so I've tried to make sure that she knows that this happens so that it doesn't freak her out when she actually, you know, does get her period. I don't know that I'll share this actual ad with her because, it, like I said before, it seems like it's playing it up as something magical and better than it is. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the truth is it kind of sucks, especially when you're that age and you're not used to it and you're, I, I think, and this is what kind of surprised me, maybe it didn't surprise you guys, I didn't know anybody in junior high who was using tampons. I mean, everybody I knew started with panty liners because tampons are pretty advanced, and in this ad, that she's throwing them around like everybody's going to, you know, grab tampons, and so that was a little strange to me. I thought, is, is this like a thing now? Is this what, like, teenagers or preteens are you using tampons now? I used one that was for my very first period, and my wow. mother was outside the bathroom explaining to me how to put it in. <laughs> and I, I, I'm not kidding. This is awful. I put it in wrong because I didn't realize that you had to take the applicator off. And so <laughs> it got stuck, and it was awful. Like, I had to go in my, my – I mean, it was I was, like, sobbing. I had to go in the bathtub to get it out. It was awful. So – I, they might, it might be a little advanced for <laughs> like, right. most girls. I probably should have waited a year. At least gotten used to it. Had my 12 cycles and then and then tried. Um, but, no, I don't think it's. I think I do think some girls do start right away with tampons. It's more convenient. Bless me. Yeah. yeah. I think it depends. I think it depends on your age. I was. Mm. I won't even tell you how young, but I was. I was at least a year younger than most of my peers when I started, and it's just not. I mean, had they even invented tampons? <laughs> I think they had. But I, I didn't start using those until high school. Yeah, right. that was my experience. Most of my friends all used pads for at least a couple years. We all walked around with, you know, big diapers. <laughs> Which is the worst feeling in the world. I mean, it's so liberating once you discover how much easier tampons are. I, I just, like, had this flashback to my mom telling me when I was 14 or 15, whenever I started using tampons the first time she was like if you need help I'll come in there and help you and I remember just being horrified <laughs> no I think I can handle it myself thank you mom um, yeah that's just crazy memories that this brings back that's for sure so I'll share uh, my daughter's nine years old and I decided it was time to have this discussion before she started fourth grade because a lot of the girls in her class have older sisters and I knew that this would be coming up at spend the night parties and everybody to a person recommends this American girl book the care and keeping of you and I just happened to find it a couple weeks ago um, at the bookstore ran into it so I gave that to her and she just devoured the book I mean as soon as I brought it home she like read every page it has a great description for younger girls of you know your, what your period is, how it works, what's going to happen. It doesn't um, shy away from the topic at all, but it doesn't you know scare you either. And I thought that was a great book, so I'm just going to put that recommendation out there because she read it and she was okay. Well, yeah, I can handle that, and that's that's a good description. And, and then it's got all kinds of things on taking care of your body, and she's been very into it. I think she's read it two or three times just in the last couple of weeks. 
I've heard that's a great book. My parents gave me the book, I think it was Your Woman, Your Body, but they rubber banded off the parts about sex. Oh, because of course they assumed that, you know, like the tween girl was going to ignore the rubber band and, you know, like totally avoid that part. Right. I took it into school, took the rubber band off, and we all passed it around. <laughs> <laughs> Better you learn from a book, though, than from friends. I mean, that's like my next big discussion with my daughter is the sex talk, and I still am like, how am I going to do that? So let's get back to the video. I don't want to totally derail this discussion. The thing that's really interesting to me is why do you think that advertisers are taking so long to catch up here? Why are we still seeing the blue liquid and the panty liners and the euphemisms? And why is it still being made out to be something that we're all supposed to not talk about. See, I don't think that's girls. I think that's men. Because mm -hmm. I think, for the most part, you know, women, we have our periods once a month. Like, we, we know the drill. Like, it's, I, don't, I don't, most of my friends and I have talked about it, and it's not like we're squeamish about it. Um, but men, they have some catching up to do in that regard, I think. And especially if it's going to be a national television, I think there are few men who are enlightened enough to be able to, you know, not... If they saw red liquid instead of blue liquid, I think it would give them a heart attack, you know? I mean, did you see... There was a, not a video not that long ago where a woman was asking people to buy her tampons outside a store. It was like a social experiment of some kind. And it was, she was stopping men and asking them to buy her tampons. And I mean, you should have seen the looks on these men's faces. I mean, they were like, they were horrified by the idea. It was like, that's far too personal. I can't do that. It's like, it's not like they're, you know, contaminated. They're in a store. You're an idiot. So <laughs> whatever. But I mean, I can kind of understand why a guy wouldn't want to do that for a stranger, but still. Um, so I do think it's, I think it's more men than women who are uncomfortable with it. I but agree it is. Men. It's hard to show it, though, in an ad where, I mean, you do the same thing with diapers or whatever. I mean, I don't know how graphic you can really go for a national ad, you know what I mean, for something like that. So, um, yes, probably men are involved in making a lot of these, but I, I don't I don't know. I, I don't know how else you would portray it in a way where you don't turn people off. How do you guys feel are... about it being called the V? I'm sure you've seen that on commercials. The V. <laughs> like the V. I for don't what? know anybody. For vagina? Yes, for vagina. Uh, and I don't know anybody never heard that. <laughs> who's ever called it the V, but that's that's what it is <laughs> in television ads now. Well, I think people are freaked out by not just the anatomical terms, but you know, even saying like always or Kotex. I mean, I work for a newspaper and I wrote a column a couple of years ago where I had gone to cover a women's day at the hospital and I used the word Kotex and the male publisher came to me and he said, we can't use that word, this is a family newspaper for Kotex. And so, I mean, I wasn't using vagina. So just imagine if Kotex freaks men out, how bad would vagina freak men out on the TV? Right. But I could see parents being really offended if, if you get graphic and, and anatomically correct or whatever with, with um, period ads, too. I mean, moms, yeah. too. Like, that would be a problem for a major company to, you know, do this Camp Gyno thing or, or whatever. I just, I, you know, your kids are watching, they're little, you're not, you haven't told them yet or whatever. I, I, I think there's a lot of things that are, there are a lot of things that are sanitized on television and ads for those reasons. Yeah, and parents do want to be in control of when their kids find out about that and how it's framed and, um, yeah, and finding out from television. I think parents want to be the ones who are the source of that information before mm -hmm. their kids find out from other sources. My mom told me when I was like three or four years old, I, I still remember, she told me just briefly, <laughs> but... Um, so, and then, you know, I got the books, too, when I was older. But, um, but yeah, so I kind of was prepared <laughs> at a young age. Um, in terms of telling daughters and things, I mean, I think you just have to be realistic. Like, don't, don't sugarcoat it, but don't make it sound like the worst thing ever either, you know? That's Both of I my kids are really aware of, I mean, I have a boy and a girl, and I'm having another girl. And obviously, the the one in me is not learned has doesn't know anything about her period yet. But the um, but the I'm both my son and my daughter are aware of periods. They see tampons around the house. They know they're not, not they're not like lying around the house, but you know in our medicine cabinet <laughs> and, and such. And you know it's not a secret. And my daughter's kind of 
horrified by it. You know, she's always like, oh, is that really going to happen to me? And it, I know it freaks her out, but we've, we've talked a lot about it. I'm sure that at some point I'll get her a book, but we've actually already had the birds and the bees talk, and she's six. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't think it's going to be too shocking to her to hear that that's going to happen. I think yeah. sons need to hear it too, though. I mean, yeah. I have a husband who is really good about, you know, he'll go and buy me tampons or whatever. He doesn't care, and I think it's because his mother was pretty open about things and, you know, didn't freak him out. And so he's not freaked out. And now, you know, he's a father of a little girl. He does need to be on board with all this and, you know, be supportive of his daughter. So I think it's good for us to talk to our sons because, you know, they might marry one day, they might have daughters, whatever. It's a good yeah, point. Yeah, I mean, I'm glad you bring that up because I have a son and I've told him the birds and the bees story and I've told him about how grown ups um, have sex with each other sometimes for non-procreative reasons, and I have not brought up menstruation yet, just because I haven't even. What what do you what do we want boys to know about it? And I mean, I, I need to think through like what what do we want what do we want them to know about it? How do we get them to be comfortable and not freaked out? And I mean, I I just have that's like even more than the other sex topics. That was the one that flummoxed me the most was how do I how do I frame this so that he's not you know a squeamish little twerp about the whole thing right so because I think son, that's a good point I mean you don't want your son to go to school and be the kid that teases the girl who started her period I think that that's probably the most important aspect of explaining it to boys at that age my son is five and um, I mean he he's pretty he he knows about it already and we he knows that you know women bleed once a month and I explained that it was because they don't have babies inside their tummy so when I first told him that I was pregnant he actually like the first thing that he said to me is oh so you won't be bleeding every month like and my son's five you know <laughs> so I mean I don't know if that's good or bad but it's what it is and it's how our family is and um, you know hopefully he'll be like his dad when he's older and be comfortable around the idea well, I'll say one thing for this ad. I think it's generating a lot of discussion around this topic, and especially as moms, I think the more we talk about it, the better when it comes to our kids, sons and daughters. That was a really good point that we maybe need to think about what we're going to tell our sons about this. Um, so I just want to thank you guys for chiming in and giving me your perspective, and I want to thank all of you out there on the Internet for tuning in yet again. We'll see you here next week at another Moms Matter Google Hangout. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.